Hi everyone, in these videos from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at the mechanics of breathing, specifically the actual mechanism by which we take a breath, and discuss the implications that it has not just on the respiratory system, but importantly in anesthesia, the effects it has on the cardiovascular system. Now this is crucial to understand because in later videos when we discuss placing a patient on the ventilator, things change, and in order to understand how they change, you have to understand how they work at baseline. In mechanics of breathing one, we looked at the pressures in different parts of the respiratory system. We identified the intraalveolar pressure as being 760 millimeters of mercury. We identified the atmospheric pressure out here being 760 millimeters of mercury. And we identified the intrapleural space, intrapleural, as having a pressure of 756 millimeters of mercury or minus four relative to the intraalveolar pressure. And that's what allows the alveoli to actually stay open is that they exert more pressure than the intrapleural space. Now I always ask medical students and residents, how we take a breath? How do we explain to me? And I almost always get the same answer. We create negative pressure. And I always follow up with how, what does that mean? And a lot of times I get a blank stare and this is kind of what I'm aiming to elucidate in this video. So let's take a quick look back at my favorite equation, pressure equals force over area. As we decrease, uh, I apologize, as we increase our area, our pressure is going to go down. And that's really how we end up taking a breath. We increase our intrapleural area, I apologize, our intraalveolar area by mechanisms of musculature movement. So again, to reiterate, by increasing our area, we decrease our pressure. Decreasing a pressure between the atmosphere and the alveoli increases a gradient, and the larger a gradient, the more flow there is. So if we look at our diagram here, to take a breath, step one is that the diaphragm has to drop. And it's going to come, and we're just gonna draw it here. And at the same time, our intercostal muscles contract, leading to the rib cage expanding and rising. So ribs up, diaphragm down. And this leads to an overall increased area of the intrapleural space. As you can see, there's pleura, uh, remember, the parietal pleura is attached under here to the diaphragm. So as the diaphragm moves down, it's going to go ahead and pull the parietal pleura away from the visceral pleura. And as the chest wall expands and rises, again, the parietal pleura is attached to the chest wall. We're going to further pull the chest wall away from the visceral pleura. This increases the intrapleural area, thus dropping its pressure. Well, when the pressure of the intrapleural space goes down, that allows our alveoli and uh, our intraparenchymal space to further expand. That allows the alveoli's area to go up, leading to a decrease in the intraalveolar pressure. Again, it's all changes in area that lead to changes in pressure. So as our intrapleural pressure goes down as a result of the area going up because of chest wall and diaphragm movement, it allows the alveoli and the intraalveolar space to expand into that space to try and maintain the minus four pressure gradient, increasing our alveolar area, dropping the intraalveolar pressure. Now, since there is a drop in pressure from 760 to 759, that means that the gradient between the atmosphere at 760 to 759, there is one, this is what allows flow of atmospheric air into alveoli. And air flows in in order to meet the pressure requirements of the expanded area. If nothing moved in, if no volume moved in, the area would simply collapse back down again. Now conversely, when the diaphragm and intercostal muscles relax, 
the diaphragm moves cephalad again back up this way which gets rid of all of this and the intercostal muscles can relax and the the thorax drops again the intrapleural space begins to shrink again so we're going to go ahead and shrink our intrapleural space here and again as our space gets smaller because now the chest wall and the the parietal pleura is moving closer to the visceral pleura again the pressure is going to rise as the pressure rises it puts pressure on the wall of the lung thus compressing the alveoli increasing uh, decreasing the area again leading to an increase in intraalveolar pressure to 761 greater than atmospheric pressure causing air to flow out of the alveoli and out of the airway into the atmosphere until it reaches again an equilibrium at 760 millimeters of mercury i know everything's a little messy here as far as drawings go so i hope you kind of followed what i was saying um, there will be a diagram of this with a step-by-step -step explanation under pictures and images as well i hope that this clearly articulated the mechanism by which we take a breath and really the question is why is this important especially in anesthesia well as it turns out, a large portion of our job is manipulating physiology to get the results we want for a patient. Remember, the mediastinum is within the thorax and has its own part of the pleura that's attached to the diaphragmatic portion of the parietal pleura. What this means is that, you know, as the pleura rides over the, the mediastinum in the heart, when the diaphragm drops and our intrapleural space decreases again, like we discussed, uh, as a result of the increased area, this means that there's less pressure on the heart. This decrease in pressure in the heart allows it to expand, allowing it to accommodate more volume and more blood will flow back as a result of increased pressure gradient from the periphery back to the heart. Now again, this is just one example and we're going to explore it later, especially when we talk about putting patients on a ventilator, but it's just to give the idea of what we'll be discussing. And again, I hope this kind of elucidates what we mean by creating negative pressure. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or are interested in getting involved, feel free to check us out on Instagram, contact us, and subscribe below. Stay tuned for the next video.